In chapter 13, we learn how to solve for the reaction forces and moments of statically indeterminate beams. We'll use a superposition technique to solve for reactions when there are more unknowns than equations. Up to now, all of our beams have been statically determinate. Two unknowns are either two reaction forces or a reaction force and a reaction moment. We learned how to solve these problems in statics using two equations, some of the forces and some of the moments. As long as the number of unknowns matches the number of equations, you can solve the problem easily. A lot of real beams are statically indeterminate. Think about a deck attached to the back of a house. You don't normally have a single support at each end. Instead, you have multiple supports every few feet. If one of the piers fails, then the others can take up the load. The problem is that now we have more than two unknowns, but we still only have two equations. The fancy word for that is indeterminate. The way we solve a statically indeterminate problem is by breaking it up into separate statically determinate problems. The beam problem in this slide is a cantilever beam with a support at the free end. We want to calculate two reaction forces and a reaction moment. If we take away the extra support at the free end of the beam, then the beam would sag a certain amount. We'll call the amount of sag delta 1. Now, if we put the support back in and allow the support to push upwards, but take the applied loads away, then the end of the beam would bend upwards. The amount it bends is delta 2. You can find formulas for deflection at the end of a cantilever beam in Appendix F. What we'll do is set these two formulas equal to each other. A bunch of terms will cancel out, and we'll be left with an algebraic equation for calculating the reaction force R sub A. Here are the five steps we need to follow to solve statically indeterminate beam problems. First, we have to identify the location of the extra support. This is a place where the actual deflection is zero, because the beam is sitting on a support. The rest of the beam may be deflecting upwards or downwards, but at this particular point, deflection is zero. In steps two and three, we either remove a support or we remove the applied loads and determine the deflection equations from Appendix F. In step 4, we set the deflection equations equal to each other and solve for the unknown reaction force at the extra support. Finally, we use the sum of the forces and sum of the moments to figure out the remaining reactions. Let's solve a problem with numbers. The extra support is at point A. If we remove the extra support, the beam will sag due to a point load that is not located at the free end of the beam. Appendix F gives us a formula for finding deflection at the end of the beam due to a point load that is not at the end of the beam. Now we restore the extra support and remove the applied loading. We treat the reaction force at the extra support as a real force pushing up on the beam, causing it to bend. Appendix F gives us a formula for deflection at the free end of a beam that is caused by a point load located at the free end of the beam. The formula says PL cubed over 3EI, but we know that P is actually R sub A. Next, we set the two deflection equations equal to each other because we know that the actual deflection at this point is really zero. 
we solve for r sub a, and the answer is 0.519 kips. We can use some of the forces to find the reaction force r sub b, then we can add up the moments to find m sub b. Given this information, we can draw shear and moment diagrams to find out the maximum shear load and bending moment in the beam. In most of our previous beam problems, the maximum moment was at the wall, but in this case, it's at the point load. Now let's look at a beam with three simple supports. The extra support is at point C. We can take away the support, then find the equation for deflection of a beam due to a point load at some location x that is different from where the point load is applied. In this problem, x is 2 meters from the left end of the beam at point C. Now we restore the extra support and remove the applied loads. Let the extra support force deform the beam, and we can find the equation for deflection of a beam at a point load. Next, we set the two deflections equal to each other and solve. The reaction force at point C is 647 newtons. We can use some of the moments and some of the forces to find the other two reactions. The shear diagram shows that the maximum shear is between point C and the point load. The maximum moment is at point C, but it's almost as large at the point load. Notice that R sub A is negative. This means that the reaction force is actually pulling the beam down preventing the beam from lifting at point A. That's important to know because it tells you that the support has to be a pinned support, not a roller support, at point A. In this problem, our second deflection equation used variables A and B for the lengths from the end of the beam to the point load. You may run into a case where both parts of the solution have A and B variables, and the values of A and B may be different in each of the two equations. The last example in the chapter is just this kind of problem. I recommend using subscripts 1 and 2 for your A and B terms so that you can keep your variables straight, just like the example in the book.